Welcome to Sound of the North. My name is Kenneth Muratore. Today's sermon is titled Fig Leaves and Fences. And we're looking at Colossians in the second chapter, beginning in verse 20. It says, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. So you see, Paul is telling us with regard to the commandments and doctrines of men, what are you guys doing with them? You see, what happened is the Pharisees, that is the religious leaders, build fences around the commands of God. That way, you know, you wouldn't break the God's command. But in so doing, they ended up breaking them. The very fences they built around the commandments that were given by God actually broke the commandments of God. And when we go back to the beginning, we see what? Adam and Eve, right? And what happened? Well, the serpent came in and sowed his seed in Eve. Hath God really said? And she was deceived. She was beguiled. And she did eat of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, which was forbidden to be eaten of. And then what happened? Adam came along, right? And he hearkened unto Eve's voice. That is, he hearkened to the serpent's seed that was planted in her, and he did eat. And when he did, sin and death entered the world. Just as God said, thou shalt surely die the day that thou eatest of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What happened? Well, they decided to get their own righteousness. They decided to fix it themselves. They, you know, cut down some fig leaves and wrapped themselves up. You see, covering up their transgressions. See, we had the Pharisees building fences around the laws of God to keep people from transgressing them. And we have Adam and Eve covering up their transgressions. But what did God say? He says, listen, it's going to require the shedding of blood for the remission of your sins. The penalty of death is going to have to be paid because I already set out a decree that the day that thou eatest of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die. But I'm going to give you a promise. A seed shall come from the woman which shall crush the serpent's seed. Now that seed is Christ. He is the word of God. He's the Old Testament. He's the law, the prophets, the Psalms in the flesh. He's the word of God. He's the son of God. He's the promised seed. And as we go a little bit further into the story, we see Cain and Abel. That is, Adam and Eve had two sons. Well, they had many children, but the two sons recorded for us were Cain and Abel. And what do we see there? Well, we see that Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a worker with his hands. And Abel was a tender of the sheep. And Abel believed God regarding the promised seed. He believed that God would make him righteous. You see, when God slew the animal after Adam and Eve had sinned, yet you know, you ever wonder where fire came from? Well, it didn't come from the cavemen. You know, it wasn't a bolt of lightning that came down and struck a tree or the ground. But I believe it was the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the scriptures teach us that Jesus was slain from the foundations of the world. And I believe that Jesus taught Adam and Eve regarding the sacrifice to come. The sacrifice that was going to have to be made on their behalf. And he did this in, in a pictorial form by the shedding of the blood of an animal. And then he clothed them with the skins, showing that they will be clothed with the righteousness of God. They'll be, again, partakers of his divine nature in Christ, in the promised seed. So, I believe that God there had a burnt offering. Because we see, as we continue reading, that there were five Levitical offerings. Three of them which dealt with sin. And two of them, which were the peace offering and the meal offering, which were really Thanksgiving type offerings in which you could bring, you know, the fruit of the ground. Well, I believe that, that Christ showed them about the burnt offering, showing them that he was going to have to bear the sins of the whole world and it was going to have to be judged. And as we continue reading, we see that Abel, he believed the promise seed and he brought a blood sacrifice to the Lord and the Lord was pleased. But what did Cain do? Cain brought a thanksgiving offering, denying the need for the promised seed. Now see, both were sinners. Abel was a sinner. The difference is, is he was believing in his need for a redeemer and didn't walk in sins where Cain, on the other hand, denied his need for the promised seed, brought a thanksgiving offering to God. And what did he do? He committed murder. He walked in sins. He wasn't walking in the truth. The truth is, is he was a sinner and he needed a savior. He needed Christ, the Redeemer, the promised seed. Now many people, like the Pharisees, want to build fences around the ordinances of God. 
in order to establish their own righteousness. And likewise, there are many people that just, you know, bring Thanksgiving offerings and cover up their transgressions with fig leaves instead of putting on the righteousness of Christ. And we look in Matthew, in the 11th chapter, 19th verse, we read, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Well, what's going on here? Is that these religious leaders saw Jesus drinking wine and eating food in feast-type settings, and they accuse him of transgressing the law of God. Well, what are we talking about? Well, when we look in Proverbs, in the 23rd chapter, in the 19th verse, this is what we read. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in thy way. Be not among wine-bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. So, these religious individuals were accusing Jesus of being a drunkard. Was Jesus ever a drunkard? No. He wasn't a drunkard. Did he drink wine? Yes. Was that wine fermented? You bet it was. You bet it was. Jesus never denied the fact of, of drinking fermented wine. But you know what he wasn't? He wasn't a drunkard. Do you think God wants you to be a drunkard? Of course not. You see, Jesus, as we stated, is all the law. He is all the prophets. He is the Psalms. Made in the flesh. Now, he only desires good things for us. But you know what Jesus wasn't doing? He wasn't following the commandments of men. He wasn't building fences around the law of God. He was fulfilling it. Nor was he covering up the transgressions of men with fig leaves. He was paying for them. That is, he was headed to the cross, the shedding of his blood for the remission of their sins. And listen as we continue reading. We look at Matthew, the 11th chapter, starting in the 15th verse. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I like in this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, but ye have not lamented. But what is he talking about? He's saying, Listen, we played happy songs, and you guys weren't dancing. We played a sad song, and you guys weren't mourning. You guys are you guys are strange. You guys are backwards. Listen to what he says. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He had the devil. Now here's that you guys want to build fences around me having wine? And eating and hanging out with sinners? Okay, because you think you guys are experts in the law of God and you know what God wants? Well, what about John the Baptist? He wasn't hanging out with sinners and publicans. He wasn't drinking wine and eating flesh. Okay? And what did you say about him? You accused him of having a devil. Then the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then he began to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. You see, the message is repentance. The message is turning from whatever it is unto Jesus Christ, the promised seed. You see? It's just like when the children went through the desert. And what did God do? God fed them with manna. What was he doing? He was trying to teach them that there's pleasures in my right hand. You know, who's at the, who's at the Father's right hand? It's Christ. He's there right now making intercessions for us. And there are pleasures in Christ. And just as they were fed with manna, that's not to us. I mean, God's not going to necessarily rain down manna from heaven. He could. He's God. But that's not to us. But it's for us. Because we break the bread of life. We break open the word of God. We break open Christ. And the Spirit of God feeds us with the manna from heaven. The word of God. Christ. By His Spirit. You see? It's for us. It's not to us. And Jesus is trying to say to them, listen, you guys have missed it. You miss the whole point of the law. The law is to draw you to the Father. That is, to His promised seed, me, Christ. That's what He was teaching. That's what He was trying to tell them. You guys are building fences around this stuff to justify yourselves in your own righteousness. He's trying to tell them, I am going to be your righteousness. I am your righteousness, and I'm going to pay for the sins of the world. And His message was a message of repentance. See? Listen to what he says as we kind of skip down. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them on the babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, I know there are many people that want to put fences, you know, around having alcohol or eating at feasts or covering up their iniquities with fig leaves and acting like it's not a problem. But what Jesus is teaching us is there are pleasures in Him. That's what the Father is teaching us. He doesn't want us to be drunkards. How many of us would stand up after being at a party and drinking and eating and then say unto those individuals, Who's still thirsty? Who's still hungry? Come unto Christ and be satisfied. It's all about doing the will of the Father and having pleasures in Him. I hope this has helped you. We're out of time. God bless.